Good afternoon. A little, a little bit late. Okay. Welcome to my afternoon broadcast. <laughs> this is number 461. And episode 461 is actually in res- is the talk that I probably should have given five days ago, but I ain't responding to something else and answer it differently. Anyway, topic today, so I'll explain in a moment, is a strong man. Uh, I think that's the title should be A Strong Man Can Handle a Strong Woman. Um, are we. No. The title, I'll give you what I remember the title. Read what it said at the top because that's what it's supposed to say. Um, <laughs> Some enjoys it, they can type it for me. I think the title was something like A Strong Man Can Handle a Strong Woman, um, A Weak Man Will Say She Has Attitude. That was kind of what it was said. So before I, before I get into the topic, let me choose myself and jump into this. My name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily broadcast, even though it is a few minutes later than usual, normally it's 5 p.m. Pacific time. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and occasionally I can articulate things clearly. Um, I hope passionate. I, I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And I often do talks for both men and women, both sides, and bring to heart, I'm sure it's popping properly, um, some clear teachings. And this one today is actually a post I did last week now I think it was but it's been some it's been a lot of comments and dialogue and response and some upsets and some hurt feelings and some re- yay yay okay type things as well which is the title of this broadcast um, the article had some points in it I'm looking to get to that but I want to speak to the point of view about men and women and this thing about control power weakness attitude type stuff because this is one this is really want to break it down and if you haven't seen me broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, yeah, 5.10 today. Um, and I trust you'll find value in these and you can get something from them. If you want to comment in the broadcast, I'll respond as I do them. This is a Facebook Live initially. If you're watching it on YouTube, it's a replay. If you're listening to it on podcast, at the end, it is a replay as well. But in Facebook Live and on YouTube, you can type in the comments either in the replays or live on Facebook, and I can respond and interact with you here. So that gives you a clue. So the topic... There's a perception of women that is inaccurate. Actually, there's several perceptions of women that are inaccurate. But I'll speak to this one about this thing of attitude. Because so many men have yet to wake up to the fact that women are powerful. I spoke about men, women, women and power um, on Saturday or Friday. And what came through in the understanding is that basically what the truth about women, sorry, about men is that when women are in their power, men are actually men men try to control out of fear. That they're afraid of women's powers, so they try to control it. And this has been the thing that's gone through for generations and for millennia, that men have consistently attempted to control the female population because deep down inside, they're shit scared of them. Yes, I said that. And this for me is a big point to make is that in relationship context, because I take it out of the um, force of nature energy and the millennial mille- the um, archetype of history but in bringing it into a relationship in this really simple breakdown a man who's not truly in his heart in his masculine heart in his strength and his truth and I don't mean machismo or brute force I'm talking about pure strength which is aligned to his heart his, his integrity has no fear or f- desire to control a woman in her strength and her power in fact, if anything, he is in awe and respect of her. A man who is weak, in this context of the title, or basically a man who is out of alignment with his truth, a man who has been still caught up in the egoic, um, controlling um, machismo mindset, will do his best to dominate women and will not allow them to have space, will not allow them to live their truth, and basically will not allow them to step into their fullness either. So weak men, weak women, in this construct I'm establishing here, is an old paradigm that we've come, that we're hopefully growing out of. The old codependent model from generations before, that my parents and parents before them, and maybe your parents too, were raised in, and some of us actually took on those habits, because I did talk about that before, about how we learn habits from younger age, based on what we're modeled by our parents. Our parents' model of codependence was where they couldn't live without each other. But it was a very weakened place to be. Most relationships back in that day were so enmeshed that they couldn't live without each other. 
and watching my dad for the last six years since my mother passed away. My mom passed away in 2012, and my dad's still going. He's 92 now. So he's up there, and they've been together 60 years, which is a long time, is that he still is wishing he had already died. He can't live his life without her. And you now I understand, and yes, it's been 60 years, and, I'm, I'm, and I, don't, I'm, I want to be careful I say this. I'm not judging it as much as I'm concerned, because my dad's been, you know, for six years since my mother passed away, has done basically nothing except sit in his apartment, sit in his apartment he, that they were in together, watching TV, and basically slowly fade, not fading, but just getting less and less energetic. You know, his ability to move around is diminished, he's, you know, because he doesn't go out and do anything. And that is the, that is the one of the, the, the dark sides of codependence is when you lose that partnership, you don't know how to live. See, codependence is a trap because it puts you in a place where the other person has full control of your life. Yes, full control of your life. Codependence in this model, and this is the weakened stage, the weak man, weak woman, is a place, and I'm using an overlay, is an interesting way it's coming through, but anyway. So, codependent model, so you get this clearly in your bones. It's a position you live where your partner is so important to you that you'll give up everything for them, which means that whatever they do, you're a puppet to their strings. Absolutely, you can, you're controlled by them. Your freedom is limited by what they do or don't do. You're absolutely in a place where you don't have the freedom to do what you want because you're in mesh with them. This is a codependence at its worst case, and this is actually a trap. And one of my favorite books that will break this down for you if you, don't, if you want to know more about codependence is by a gay Katie Hendricks called Conscious Loving. The book's been out 25, 30 years. It's a classic, but it really breaks down the understanding of how codependent, codependence doesn't work and how, in fact, you can grow beyond it. Now, my learning over the years and, and, and the teachings I've studied with for the last 10, 15, 12 years speaks about the level above that, which is, first of all, independence, but then interdependence. The difference between interdependence and codependence is the difference between a conscious and awakened aware relationship, a strong man, strong woman, and a unconscious, unaware, weak relationship. I have to make sure I do all the equivalent words. So a, a conscious relationship, a awakened relationship, a, an evolved and interdependent relationship, where both partners are responsible for their own parts in the relationship, responsible is a big part of it, by the way, are willing to own their own place in that relationship, fully empowered, they don't take shit personally by the other person, really. You, you're not at a mercy of the other person. The codependent model puts you in a place of victimhood, as I mentioned. You're a puppet at this, on the strings of the other person. You are a victim, whatever they do. So if they don't show you what they, the love you want, you get upset with them because you put their love above, beyond your own. An interdependent model, you love yourself fully. If their love goes away, it might hurt, yes. You might feel wounded, you might feel grief, but you don't give up on yourself. You learn how to love and express your own truth, and you learn how to um, be an autonomous, whole, holistic partner. As I've said before, and it's in my book, I talk about in my book, 50 Ways to Love Yellow, quick plug, relationships aren't 50-50. That's the old codependent model, that you complete me, that I can't live without you. That whole model is a limited, demeaning, diminishing, and disrespectful way to be in a relationship ultimately a conscious relationship is 100-100 you're fully whole yourself and so is your partner and the additive of the two is greater than the sum of the parts a gestalt as it were and it's this growth and this opportunity that makes your relationship amazing but the thing is it puts some it requires a man to be in his authority and power as a masculine man and a woman to be in a feminine leadership of power and a divinity both of these would scare the shit out of the weak people or the, or the asleep people, should we say. And that awakened state is what I encourage you to look at being in. It's what I do in my work. It's what I've learned to, I'm still developing myself and continuing to do in my own journey to open up to that place where I can be around other people and not be hooked into what it is they're doing. Because this is the thing. When you're a codependent person, when you're in that model of codependence, that the, um, the tendency is to be looking for everything outside of you that love that connection that whatever that is and feeling that hopefully they'll survive they'll they'll give you um so we're looking for the metaphor there's a metaphor in there somewhere but it's, what there is is they're in this place where you are absolutely 
um, begging for scraps from them, as it were, energetically speaking. You don't live whole to yourself. When you really live whole to yourself, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. If they ignore you, you don't care. Well, you're not invested, put it that way. You may want to be interactive with people, but it's like you don't take things personally. You live in a place of wholeness, of autonomy, of self-love and self-respect. Thank you, media. I appreciate that. This is, this is a powerful place to be. And this, this, this statement and the title of this broadcast, which comes from an article I posted, and it's got so many comments and, and responses on it so far on Facebook, is a reminder that it's the awakening of us. It's the growth of us. It's the learning that we can be whole and complete. Because, oh, I'm sorry, I just saw two things up at once. Because when we are whole, when we are honoring ourselves, are respecting ourselves, then we can have what we want, which is real relationship, real love, and real connection. I'm seeing an indication to drop in my invitation, okay? So, part of the journey to become whole, to become autonomous, to become awakened and self-aware and self-supportive and responsible and accountable yourself is to start with loving yourself. I've actually been writing, I've been, I've been downloading and writing stuff out today because I've gotten some understanding that the self-love practice that I offer, which I'm going to mention in here and I'll give the link, is the first step of a much deeper process that I'm now starting to understand is coming forward to be written out and is a lot bigger than this. But it starts with self-love and if you're interested in finding how to do that, I invite you to go check out my, my online mirror practice I pr I put online. You can go get it and start with it. And it's got two guided meditations and it's a workbook. Not a workbook, it's a guidebook. But it basically explains how self-love is a cornerstone of your wholeness, of your awakened state, of your ability to be loving and being fully expressing. And if you go to my, I'll put the link in below in the comments, but also I'll tell you verbally. If you go to my website, which is my name, go to Barry Selby, or one word, dot com, forward slash self-love, also one word, and you can check it out there. Um, but look into your own life. My, my invitation, I mentioned the book um, um, Conscious Loving by Gay and Katie Henrich. You can see it on Amazon. It's been around for, say, 25 years. Classic book on the breakdown, understanding, and healing of codependence. If that's a trap you're in, I recommend the book. If you want to get guidance and help with that, reach out to me. Send me a message over social media. Um, if it's on Facebook, you do that. If you're on iTunes, on, uh, Actually, because in different places. <sighs> on my website, you can get a discovery session with me. It's uh, barryselby.com forward slash chat. Just sign up there and you get a discovery session. That's a way we can talk. And I'll give you some guidance and some next steps. Um, I was going to say, put, I would say, can't be on social media, but Facebook, YouTube, po podcast gets a bit convoluted. So, simple thing. Again, I'll put that in the comments below. Um, that's it, really. It's the reminder that you deserve the best. It's a reminder that you can be the best. And it's a reminder that you can step higher and higher into your own life, your own love, and your own expression. I invite you to look at that as a primary focus because truly, you deserve it. So with that, I wish you well. This is my daily broadcast, by the way, at 5 p.m. Pacific time on uh, Facebook Live initially, then onto YouTube, and then onto my podcast. So to the links so you know where to get them. The replays of my Facebook Live go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. I do broadcast on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. I then repurpose them onto YouTube, and my channel on YouTube is Barry Selby, considering that everything is my name. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, because that's the title of these broadcasts. And then I also put them onto my podcast on iTunes, which is also Messages from the Masculine. So you can search for it there, and you, subs you can subscribe and then download from there. Um, if you have questions, comments, please put, them, please put them below. I'll respond. If you reach out for help, I can help you. You got my links, I'll put them in the comments below as well. And join me tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. This is my commitment every day. Uh, close as possible. This one's a little bit late, but I'll try to be on track. Um, again, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on Facebook Live. So if you have questions, comments, please put them below. I will respond as I said. And uh, I do invite you to start practicing self-love, whether you use my practice that I recommend or do it yourself. It's a cornerstone of really becoming autonomous and owning your own power. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow as usual, and uh, take care of yourself. I'll see you soon. Bye.